This is Illinois Radio with Biko, Illinois Jones, and Pretty Riot going down right now. Welcome, welcome, welcome back to Illinois Radio. I am your host, Biko, with my homegirl, Pretty Riot, and hey Illinois y'all. Jones. Yeah. And as always, we bring you guys some of the illest guests from around the city and the globe. globe. And around today, my man, Jonathan was, Stewart, wait, this is This is like somebody that really came from somewhere else. He did. He really did. Hey, yo, he shout did. out. Hey, yo, shout out to he my guy from, Jonathan like, Stewart. Down the street, he came from Tennessee. He you know, literally slid. Every from t- show, he be like, "Yo, I will drive." <laughs> <laughs> like, bro, no, we not gonna make you drive, bro. <laughs> we gonna catch you on the right time yep. around the holiday seasons when you are already here on a real. And and you've been doing a phenomenal job at at each of our events we've put together. Facts. You he you always put on an amazing show. A memorable show. performance every yes. single time. Can, can you say that one more time? He for puts him. on a memorable performance every oh. single time. You know, we had a conversation. Yeah. You ain't feel, you know, you, your confident level was there, but you ain't know. And I was telling you, you did your I, thing. I, 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 I'm a, unaware while on stage. Are you a perfectionist? Do you consider yourself a perfectionist? Yes. I, yes. I understand I try. that. Very, 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 very hard to be a perfectionist okay. when it comes to like just the music. And I really was trying to get my performance level up to par because the Let's Get Social, just a backtrack for the people. I mean, when I did the first Let's Get Social, it had some weight on me. You feel me? Like just okay, because I didn't even recognize lot, him. Like just doing a lot. Yeah. I've been making my album, albums. He plural, was small like, beard then. So I was really, you know. If you made an album or you make albums, you do this music stuff, you know what yeah. it's like to make an album. You know what it's like to make a mixtape. Mm-hmm. In this day and age, a mixtape ain't no different from no different from an album. So True. if you make an album, you make a mixtape. So you know what it's like to make music and that's just what I was going through, but I was striving to get better with performing, definitely. So, so thank everyone. What did y'all you do to me. like better your performance skills? Because, I mean, like, of course, you know, you can write to help you write better, but what yeah. did you do to better oh, your performance and, and skills? Then to, to cold, you know, um, talk on what you're saying do you feel like uh becoming a vegan also helped um you know take your performance to another level as well well dang how you know you're i'm vegan? not a vegan oh you're I'm not, not a vegan. vegan i'm not no 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 i'm not a vegan but shout out to the vegans nothing, oh, nothing wrong with that vegan. nothing wrong with that but i just like just i eat halal down, like i eat halal meat that's really what i do and then Got you. I, I work like the rest of the other rappers the ones who do you feel me i work a job so uh <laughs> my job I do a lot of like physical work, so that helped me. You feel me with working out? I don't really have to work out when I work out at work all day, so gotcha. it's just one of those things. But, <coughs> yeah, I dropped the weight. I mean, you know, it take time. You got to get in there and do it. It just so happened to be my job. And then my wife put me on like a strict diet with like just eating halal meat, you know, bean soup, you know, multi meal. Halal meat. Halal yeah, meat, see, which that? is the <coughs> the meat, the animals. They aren't killed, and you know. Traumatic situations. It's what, what, what like a stress. A, yeah, it's like it's not a stressful death because that's how the bacteria. The meat, yeah, the bacteria, the meat be nasty. Catch all types of stuff. Yeah, you gotta watch what you eat. Everybody know that, but yeah. I'm saying it to my people. Everybody, anybody. So, I gotta, so where do you find halal? Yeah, yeah. like yeah. I like I've heard I've heard halal. I won't even lie to you. My wife go. She she, she do the that. I feel you. She, she I just give me her number so I can ask. Like, I don't, I don't want nothing but your, with your food plan. Yeah, <laughs> your your meal plan. Your meal plan. <laughs> you know, it's, it, I definitely recommend it. Watch what you eat because it's shit in everything that we eat. Right. Period. Since the first, you know, everything that we eat. Since the first time we met uh, at Let's Get Social, like you always gave your wife like mad credit. Yes. Man, what? Like, I don't hear a lot of artists doing that. Especially when you get mugs like I'll say cheating on their wife. But whoa, whoa, ahead. whoa, whoa. We're not here to talk about no dirt. <laughs> but I'm saying that's good that he's like that. I'm, I just want to know, like, you know, what was it? Was it hard? Like, what took you to get to that? Or was it something that you just felt like, you know, she just deserved her credit? No, I mean, she ride, bro. Like, you talking about. I've been knowing my wife for 10 years, I'm 26. Oh, shit, Since we, you know, if we backtrack, I'm 26. Yeah. Okay. Um, been knowing my wife for 10 years. She's just somebody who been there for me, period. Like when I was at my lowest, legit, when you walk away and you, you low, low. Uh-huh. She right there? She was down, what? She's still up. <laughs> Love. She, she cold. Out. That's, that's why, right. that's why look, she's your wife. Look, that's, look she, she beat up Debo. President. Look, she uh, beat up Debo. She cold. She's the vice president, the record label, being that man's Bill Brands record. 
Say that slowly for the people can hear you. Billionaire mass build brands. Period. There we Records. go. Period. Oh, that's, the, that's, that's the record label. Yeah, that's the record label. I okay. mean, I mean, let's go further into, into the label. Uh, you know, how did how did things come about? I started being a man's build brands in 2013. The game was changing, the climate, or if you want me to be honest, it had already changed. I probably was just catching up to the change, the shift. That's okay. what I like to say, the shift. Um, frustration with the record industry, seeing that, okay, you can now, there are now platforms for you to put your music on. Cause it was nothing like it is now. Like when I started my record label, when I was on, when I was on that, like, yeah, I want to do my own thing. You weren't able to just put your music up on Spotify. Right. Mm-hmm. The big facts. No. You weren't able to do that. You had to pay like everything else. So it's different now, but just striving for that, we were still doing a mixtape thing heavy. Like, um, I was gonna say Illinois. That's crazy. Um, live mixtapes. That piff. You know what I'm saying? And then blogging was huge still, cause Keith had broke. Chicago yeah. was on the map. Everybody who came out in 2013 was popping. It was a crazy year that year for music. Um, and I just wanted it, just striving for it. And then you know, it's an idea, and then it turned into an actual it, the thirst come you know? after the idea. Mm. The thirst. I like the way you said that. Then you develop the drive on like, okay, with seeking information, you get that drive. What was the biggest thing that you learned like starting your own record label? Like what's the, like if you had to give somebody some advice or the most vital Mm -hmm. information for these upcoming artists like that you've learned by starting your own label and being an artist, like what advice would you give them? If you don't know how to do, if you don't know how to tie your shoes and chew gum, don't do it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's on my daughter. Mm. Don't do it. It's that simple. Because you have to be able to. If you don't know the business, don't you do have it. To, it's, but it's it's not even necessarily okay, the you, business. You're going to have to I learn the business. I just had to repeat it. <laughs> you're going to have to learn the business. Yeah. So once you learn, like, <clears throat> what you learn in the business, you're going to have to split your time in half. Balance. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I learned balance too. Like, that's difficult as hell for people who club all the time. Mm-hmm. True. They mold. They. The only motivation is social media. What you see on social media. That totally, everything you see on social media totally distracts you from real life. It's entertainment. It's all an illusion. Mm-hmm. Social media is an illusion. People can play with them numbers. Thank you. That And people only going to show you what they People do play you. with them numbers. You could, you <laughs> Let's could keep it a bean. People do play, play with, with the numbers. numbers. Not to cut yeah. you off. No, no you no, you're good. People play with them numbers. That's something that need to stop. Like People need not to be throwing it out there that, yo, I do this, I do that, I got this, I got that. We all can do the same thing. Niggas, search Google. I'm going to keep it a bean. Search Google. Google University is a a, a powerful source. Okay, because knowledge is at our fingertips. I'm I'm going to keep it a bean with you, too. Everything I've learned, I've learned through either Google or or YouTube. YouTube YouTube is the one that does teachers. Look. Lomax, they put me on. That's my business partner. Fedavelli, this nigga, they put me on. He be... Look, hey, blood, YouTube, YouTube. You can find anything on YouTube. Hey. I like my cars and my, my keys in my car. Like you can. They gon' they gon' show teach you, you how, how to get your them. car. Yeah, how to change the door knob? You, you can find anything on YouTube. Yeah, you can do anything. Teach so. you how to cook all that stuff. Honestly, mm-hmm. just so. pay attention. That's just what I so. say. Like, pay listen, attention. It's listen, very hard running your own record label. Listening to your music, it wasn't. Uh, I I want always wanted to know your. You wasn't always. You could tell yeah, that you started. Sorry, you hit up. You started off somewhere different. Yes. So I wanted to know, like, the transition you got to to get what put you into getting focused into your music to focus on music. What influenced you to say, "Look, I'm gonna leave this alone and I'm gonna focus on this." I don't want to say exactly what I. I know. You, you know saying. what I mean? I used to. I started battle rap. Like I started out battle rap. Smack DVD is like the holy bible to me when it comes to rap. That. Reasonable Doubt Blueprint, you know, stuff like that. And if you pay attention to Battle Rap, they speak in a specific code. They have to. Right. Because they have to speak. They speak to the streets. So when you speak to the streets, you got to speak in a different. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, like, you got to articulate talk that different. I had to get out of that. I had to get out of that. That being my thing, me being in the streets, big homies, all of that, you, you can't bring that. 
Like once you learn mainstream music, you, you can't, can't do that. Right. What records does that sell? Facts. Do you feel like some artists get trapped in the hood? Yes. Yes, I do. I feel like love, which that sound weird, but it's love. It's the love for the hood. It's the love for the homies. You've been on. The, you've been in this hood your whole life. Even if you left, went to college, whatever the case may be, you coming back to the block. You still seeing your homies who didn't go off to school on the block. That mess with you. Yeah. What kept you focused? Wait, 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 wait. wait. We we going too far. Hold on. We we actually let's get into a music break. Um, Mm. what song would you like for us to spin for you know for our audience? Uh, I definitely love to hear make rappers rap again right now. Make rappers rap again. That joint is tough, and you know what? We're gonna get into that right now via Illinois Radio. I'll holla at you in a second. Yeah. Uh, negative. I turn heads like the bitch that was on an exorcist. The lesson is, bitch, I paid every do I owe with big face presidents. This is excellence. Why well, step with it when you got two left feet? Who's the best doc? Can I in and out these hoes pussy quicker than the rest stop? Hold my weed, let me roll up my sneakers, bitch. I'm about to cook up the stakes that you giving. Hope you can account. It's trends I just pinned in. It ain't how you started. It's about how you finished. They say I got better. I say I got clever. Be beast with a cleaver. Funny they clown us. Now niggas need us. Spin on this bitch like I'm. And welcome back to Illinois Radio. You just heard the homie Jonathan Stewart make rappers rap again. And he was really rapping on that shit. You feel me? My man. Thank you, thanks, thanks. Oh, now, um, Jones, what, what were you saying before uh, the break? My my question was, uh, you know, we was talking about, you know, was uh street was hold the street rappers hold was the streets holding certain street rappers back, and uh, being that you come from that and, and and the battle rapping, you know, what helped your transition? Oh, you gotta see the worst of the streets. Mm. Like, you gotta you gotta see it. You gotta have went through it. Like, either or, it don't matter. It ain't got to be you. Like, you don't got to be the nigga to get shot. Mm, Straight right. up. You do like but if your homie, who you kick it with every day, who you been knowing since fifth grade, get killed. That's a fact. You see what I'm saying? Like, yeah. that shifts everything for you. Then it's like, all right, I don't care what it is. I got to do something to get out of the hood. What, like, Period. What have you witnessed that that changed the way you move? I was, uh, I seen, I mean, I was five years old. I saw my first dead body at five years old. Oh. I rap about it on my album, in my mouth. Which is it's not released yet. This is the first time probably that that's really going live with the name, title, and everything. But so I, I kind of just uh, I have I a question. On. Do you feel like you have PTSD now because of that? Of course. What well, every single black person in America suffers from something. Of some form of especially PTSD. like mental health. Like you know that was like huge. Mm-hmm. What this year it was huge. It's always huge, but it's even bigger. You know, it's um, it's been picked off the list of things to discuss. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? So the agenda is to push it. Right. So that's just what that is. But that's huge and Do you feel like community. that shapes your music somehow? Like the fact that you actually deal with a certain type of PTSD coming from the environment that you do? I mean I ain't saying I grew up with rats in my living room, but I mean we all you know what I'm saying? Like we all come from something. Something, something. true. But yeah, but everybody have a way to paint that, and, and they and, and putting yeah, their pain out there. With that. Yeah, everybody yeah. has a way to putting it out, right? Yeah, you got to <coughs> deal with that in your own way, though. So this is what to be super honest. Like me, my way was bad. Like dealing with it, it was bad mm. for a very long time. Then you transition to then it transition to like, okay, I need to turn this into something else, mm-hmm. or because you hear it in the lyrics. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know the exact line, but it's the, the line of it's like a line when you like kind of com- like the phrase of the wire. I forgot it. Oh, oh, homie, stress. Oh, homie, switched up. Stringer Bell Avon. <laughs> yeah. I mean, that's just. Yo, I watched the wire. I still okay. watch the wire now. I felt like that. Me, I still watch the wire now. I think we talked about that. Yeah, we we were talking about it. When you said it, because <laughs> we just talked about it. Because I, I watched it as a this shorty week. when it came out. I was like twelve. You didn't, you didn't understand. I ain't understand it, but I watch it again now. And now I get it because that's get how it. I was watching the wire. I was still like, like, watching oh, the wire, oh, but Mike, now I'm Mike. I'm this. I'm that. I'm just like, oh, like this is like you know, you know, uh, what's the dude? I'm I'm fry. Sorry, the dude who <laughs> did who, the Creed, but Michael B. Jordan. Michael, Michael B. Jordan. Jordan. Yeah, that's my husband. Shout out. You know how many of him it is. Think about his character, and I'm only saying this because I had just recently seen this episode. And he, like, before he died, before they killed him. You know what I was thinking about the other day, and it's crazy you mentioned that. 
Remember the part when he was helping his little brother do math? Was it the deep? He was hard, help, like helping not, him with fractions. Not, like, yeah. And I can't do fractions to save my life, so that was. It was about oh, fractions. About Michael. Yeah, Michael. When Michael mm. was doing it. No, no, yeah, wait. no, 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 no. Michael, Michael B. Jordan couldn't count though. Not, remember, he was he messing the count up. But, but, he was but, messing the count up. But, but, but remember, he had his little brother. No, you're talking about Mike. Yeah, that, that was Mike. Mike. That's later on. That's later on. I thought, yeah. I thought Michael Mike. B. Jordan had his little brother in a no, spot was, too. Was, he did, but. He did. He don't know nothing. He didn't he know that. He was fucking the and, he, and he told his little brother, like, look, what if they hit the count and you messed it up? Ooh, yeah, what that was happened? Mike. That was Mike. He was like, you got to be on your po-. Mike was smart. How my braids look. So he's like, good. <laughs> <laughs> Kill this one. He said, yeah, you look good. Yo, 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 look. Y'all going to have me go watch the I know, right? Yeah, but every time you do that song, I'll be like, I, it just brings back memory. I mean, in, in, in speaking of, I guess, uh, episodes. What would you consider driven to? You know, if you can give it an episode or a, a TV series, what would you consider driven to to be based off of? Who? Who? Look at him. <laughs> He's a radio dude now. He's a radio dude now with that one. I don't know. I don't know if it's like. I mean, cause think about it. Your bars at the end of the day is still like you're telling a story. It's a movie. Oh, yeah. You know what I'm saying? You're giving the imagery without you. You you're vocally giving imagery. I would say if you can see it. It, the more and more you listen to my music, it'll come to life. You will understand me, because it's about me, of course. It's not about anybody else. It's about me. It's my life. My music is my life. It's what I, it's my thoughts, what I'm going through. It may be something that, a conversation that I've had with the team or with a random person. It's six weeks later, but it popped up in my head again. Now I want to speak up. This is what we're talking about on this record. Like That's how I operate. So... The story is being written. You are now like in the, you are in the matrix with me. That's how I look at it. Like you in the matrix with me. That was my goal with Driven 2. If I can like get into that. Like no, that was my perfect. goal with no, Driven 2. No, this is a perfect segue like for that, yeah. Kind of like, this is, this is what's going on right now. Like with me, this is what I see from music. This is what I see from life. This is what I see in my house. In my backyard You know what I'm saying Like yeah. that's just what it was for me And you know One thing I noticed about you Is You 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 know how to You know how we were talking about balance earlier You you have some balance Because think about it You'll jump on social media for a little bit But when you're in album mode You're in album MIA. mode You Exactly He he goes MIA But I feel like people should do that though Because I feel like social media is a distraction When it yeah. comes to that and, and you stuff. said that too So I feel like you have to You have to You have to go MIA you have to yeah. go MIA when you in album mode, and I feel like yeah. that's Maybe they, that's the best part. But that's the best that's part about it is that you y'all, y'all be doing y'all homework on artists. Y'all we, do y'all. We do watch that. everything. Y'all, like seriously though, we watch y'all, everything. Y'all, but y'all do y'all y'all check on artists to see what artists been up to. Y'all pay attention just to say that. Thank you. We try. I see interviews with people. They don't be paying attention. They don't care for the artists. Like a lot of the artists come up to the radio stations and don't care about the radio stations. Bro, they just hit for you already know. Ooh, I just felt that yep. with you. Mm-hmm. So, shout out to y'all for that. Shout out to hey, everyone. shout out to you for understanding, that. you know, and, and knowing behind the scenes and, and what's up because a lot of artists don't think like that. I mean, like, who cares if I get off social media when I'm working on the album? I don't, but we that's what we know. Like, I don't. <laughs> that's what we know. That's what we know. Look, get ready. Our email's going to be bumping in a couple of months. Yeah. Okay, he ain't, real, posted since, he ain't posted since October. We need to know what's going on. Clearly, he's yeah. working on something. Because sometimes that's how we check up on people. <laughs> what? I, what? I, I ain't seen them on social media. Look, 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 Bico, call me. Bico, go. Who is this put on this show? Let me go to his Instagram and see what he's been on. Yep. Oh, he in album mode. And this, yep. So he probably ain't going to want to come out until his album drop. <laughs> so let's get wait until a couple months. In this day and age, you have to be working on music consistently. That is something that people like me, Jonathan Stewart, is going to change. I don't like it. I'm saying that now. Do you feel so, like you miss out on stuff because you, you, do. you, you like, work look, on music like, so let, much? Let me, con- like, oh, me? Yeah. Yes, I miss out on everything. I know like, one of I your songs, I think you said something about your daughter. You hope she knows what you look like. Oh, I mean, that's just the grind of waking up every day knowing you got to go out. You got to go out and make yeah. True. Like that's just what that is. Period. Whatever you do, like, remember when what was that? Uh, the future joint, the trap, trap. God bless not the trap. God trap God. niggas like that joint. Remember, like everybody was like, I, I want that song to apply to me. Like, right. That's just getting up, 
No, you gotta go out there, whether you do it legally or illegally. Whatever. You gotta get it. I, yeah. th- I'm aware of that when I leave the crib. Like my daughter, I hope she know that. That's what all this. That's for. your motivation. Yeah. Hell yeah, That's a few what? of these two. I jumped out of 1992 and jumped into 2017. I hear that. And gone. <laughs> What? I mean, let's actually uh, continue with like what what dr- what has driven you to create driven two? <sighs> Taking an L, a major L. I what? took a major L. What L was that? It oh. was just an L in the music industry. Like you take an L, you go out on a limb. You, you, you don't want to speak on it financially. <laughs> well, no, because it's the situation is still. I can't speak too much on. It, gotcha. You know? I'm not allowed to speak too much on it, but. No, like, you, this game is the way that it is. When you're independent, you stay independent. You, you, you make sure you stay independent. You mm-hmm. fight for your rights no matter what. And if people don't want to, if a person tell you that you ain't got enough leverage, you go back and you create that leverage. That's how you play the system. That's how you finesse and milk. That's how you do what you're supposed to do. I, I, you go and create. You go and create. You know what you want. You know what's on your bucket list. You know what you want. So you got that on your vision board, whatever the case may be, and you go out and you seek that. And then you go back and you sit at that table and you look them square in the eye and you say, this is what I got. This is what I want. Leverage. It's about leverage. It's about leverage. That's what, that's <laughs> what push driven to. And I got my leverage. I got my leverage that I need on that personal level. Like I know everything that I need to when it comes to getting that leverage on that higher upper echelon. And know who you want. That's another thing. If I'm allowed to say no, that, go, know go who ahead. you want go to ahead. get to, because once you in that house, in that building, you gotta operate while you in that building. Don't get in there and then be like, "Yo, I'm here," right. and not move. You gotta uh, go through every room. You gotta go to every. Know where you going because it's a maze. And guess what? At the end of the day, you up if you already know how to maneuver through the through the maze. Yeah. So pretty much, you you not signing. What would you sign? Hell. No. Okay, we going. No, no, no. I wouldn't sign. Don't okay. sign. What, don't, don't, don't speak. Sign. Don't speak too much on that. Yeah, we actually gonna take a quick music break, man. What what song would you like for us to get into next, my brother? For your entertainment, Fye, by yep. Jonathan Stewart. Five. Well, we finna get in a for Five. your <laughs> your entertainment right Five. here on Illinois Radio. We'll be Real. right back at you. Damn she bad, damn she thick And I may not know perfect, but damn she it Ass fat enough to sit a fifth for do say on it And it's real, I watch the blossom like a bouquet, homie Yeah, I fuck you right, I will I fuck you right, I will I fuck you like no nigga ever will Look at you. Welcome back to Illinois Radio you feel me? You just heard Jonathan Stewart, FYE, for your entertainment. Uh, and the question was, before we went to music break, was... um Video on the way, by the way. Oh, go ahead. Go plug it in. Yeah, definitely. Video for both of the records that you have heard today on Illinois Radio. Oh, and I ain't oh, getting no get get video yeah. on my yeah. One more plug. I gotta be in the next video. One more plug. <laughs> just put me in the back like, for, hey. for those of you that are on the, you know, be on our site daily, make sure you search Driven 2. And stream that thing. Yes. Thank now you. the question on uh, when the break came about was, uh, would you sign to a, a record label? I myself right now would not sign to a record label. I'll tell you why. I feel like I have too much leverage personally. I have too much intellect personally for me to deal with a record label right now. Now, all of us understand that money talks. Period. But you rape the game. Let's keep it. This is do, for the artists. Do you like, do you feel like having having too much knowledge would uh outcast you from uh the industry as well? Yes. Yes. Um I also wouldn't if you're an artist right now and you feel like you are being blackballed, I wouldn't call you crazy. Mm-hmm. Depending on the type of music that you make, depending on the type of message that you send it to the youth or just period. You know, we know how this go. I wouldn't say you crazy, but I would say find a way around it cuz it's mm-hmm. a way around it. And, and earlier we was since we on a, a label <clears throat> talk, we were talking about you know your label, and I actually wanted to ask you you know what what frustrates you the most um, when it comes to these record labels? Mm. What just the business in general? I mean, not, you know. uh, when it comes to record labels, what frustrates me the most is that the record labels don't understand the importance of direct to consumer. 
I don't think that they do. I don't think they understand the importance of it because if they did, I think that they would care more about the artist and the artist's well-being like while they're in partnership with these record labels. So I, I, I use the word partnership. That's key. The word partnership is key when you're dealing with record labels. You never want to not be in a partnership with a record label. You have zero leverage, ownership, proprietorship. Mm -hmm. I probably still said it wrong. So I, I mean, okay. but you know what I meant. I mean, uh, <laughs> you know, you have uh, Russ. He's in partnership. Yep, yeah. You have Nipsey Hussle. He's in partnership. Jay Z, in partnership. partnership. Yeah. Um, but 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 as you you know, but as we've been talking about it, they have maximum leverage. Mm -hmm. And they've been doing pretty well. You wouldn't, you know, take a, I guess, a partnership deal like that, a distribution deal or anything. From one of, like, those parties? Um, I mean, if, I, I, yeah, we can say that. I would say that the money wouldn't move me. I would say that, honestly, just because my fight is bigger. Not even, like, up here trying to sound crazy. Like, for the people who actually know me that know, like, the music that I make, they know that I stand on this for real. If you know what you want in this music industry, and there's so many people who we meet on a day-to-day -day basis, everybody know with this social media shit and the way that it works. You meet people who say that they do this, that, and the third, a business is not in order. They don't handle mm -hmm. that business when they say that they're going to handle that business. Mm -hmm. Those are people who you don't want to do business with. Not to even compare them to the ones on a higher level, but what makes you think that those people aren't living a lie, faking the funk? We see this every day. Some coming out on social media about some artists who up there putting their information out there, or some slipping through the cracks about them. Just handle yours. Mm. Just handle yours. Whatever you want to do, get it done. Use Google. Use YouTube. <laughs> but get it done. Real talk. Get what it you, done. What you said kind of sparked something in my brain. I was listening to a Master P interview not too long ago. Well, matter of fact, I was Love listening to. Uh, I think it was. I think Shout it was Solange. I think it was Solange Her album too. Great. Yeah. He he was talking about how you know uh, this one so company was talking about. If I offer you a million, <clears throat> why would I take? Why that? would I take the two million when I can make if, ten million? I can make ten million. Somebody want to offer me more, so that's I one mean, reason why you're not going to take it because you know if somebody wanted to give you two million, you can million go get, get more. more from somewhere else. <clears throat> well, look, I was told when when you die or when you stop making music. The industry has cheated you out of a hundred million. You can make whatever you make, but the industry has already cheated you out of a hundred million dollars. That you don't know where that money is. You need to be ahead of them cheating you out of that hundred million dollars. You ever realize that this is just to throw that out there for whoever? You can audit record labels. You can audit your record label at any point in time. If they're stealing more than a certain amount of money to you from you, it's written in a contract that you can do this. If they're stealing a certain amount of money from you, they got to pay you, of course. You can sue them, of course, but then they got to pay for that audit. It's like it's all types of loopholes. A hundred loopholes. It's a hundred loopholes. So That's crazy. So it's, it's, like, it's like I saw this meme too earlier, and it was like, like how you just said it's loopholes and it's ways to get around certain contracts and I saw a contract earlier about Allen Iverson and it was saying like he gets eight hundred thousand a year from Reebok and he gets thirty two million in twenty thirty when he turns fifty five. Because probably when he turns whatever number that was you just said, things shift in that yeah. contract. Contractual. Mm -hmm. You have to put that type of stuff up in there. You, if you don't get to own so he, your... I mean, I think he, his leverage, like you said, his leverage. his leverage at that time he signed a contract was like he thought ahead of time and his future. Like, I ain't going to be at the ball this long, this long, mm -hmm. and I'm going to need that money in the future. <clears throat> so I'm going to sit on this, I'm going to blow this, but I, by the time I get through this, I'll be 55 and they'll have... Yeah. Hey, why, this they got to pay me back mailbox Why money? you think Jordan <laughs> split from Nike? <clears throat> why you think Jordan created the Jordan brand? You feel what I'm saying? It's it's the same way. Why you think Jordan is the first NBA player to become a billionaire? He learned. Mm. He had to split from Nike because Nike, at the end of the day, is like a they record label. Much. It's a they fight. Own like, the like, yeah. like speak like they they gonna, he grew bigger. Than Nike. But he, he got did. Bigger than Nike. But it, that's what I'm trying that's to leverage. say. That's if leverage. he if he would have stayed with Nike, Nike would have kept him in it. Okay, now, now look like y'all remember when Steph Curry was playing? They won their first ring. They first they they won that first ring. If you yeah. go back, you look up the contract he was in, it was shit. Shit, shit. Yeah. It was crazy. It was like, 
Why, who who allowed oh, that? Yeah. <laughs> Especially after you go two rings later, you see the you see what they've given him, and you compare that to what they gave him within those first years. But you got to look at it. They know coming in. Like, they know coming in Steph Curry is going to be Steph Curry someday. Yeah. Like, we got But they give him the right now. Davis. They give him the but right now. We going to give him the right now. That's a nice, that's a good phrase for the right now because yep. as of right now, this is what I think he's worth. It's the difference between him and a LeBron right now. That's why they that's how they gauge you. And and they and they base it all off other things. Right. His and, height. And, and it's like know, even, even though we talking sports at the same time, this is the same shit going on with the, the music, music industry. industry. Yeah. And oh, you, yeah, and, you and, and you know with us speaking on it, you are literally informing others. We talking about a whole everybody other has, platform, everybody has money but problems. it's still the same. You hear the intro to my album and tell you about entertainment. I was how, about to say, I just want to say, just about Driven too. I love the skits that you have on there. Thank you, just that's my because, cousin. Be, because I love when artists include skits on their album, and it makes sense Thank with you. the with the message and the flow Thank of their you. album. Like I was listening to Thank it, and I was just like, look, look, I no, have to Thank tell him that I fuck with the skits on there because. You drop like I don't know who talking. Shout out Rello, that's my okay. Big, yeah, I'm like I don't know who cousin. talking, that's but they because, but they are dropping Rello. gems on the skits, and I'm just like sometimes that type of shit is needed because yeah. I'm a person I listen to an album, a project, front to back, forward and backward before I'm gonna put it on shuffle with anything. I'm gonna listen to it solid straight through because that makes the skits make sense. Mm-hmm. Your skits made so much sense, and I was listening to it, and I'm like, okay. The to be brutally something? honest, like the skits made so much sense. We had to triple back to make sure the music made sense. Made sense with the skits. It's just like, no. <laughs> you know how you, you be in the verse, you have a pop moment. You veer off. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, you, yeah. you know what I'm talking about. Yeah. You know, like, you veer yeah. off. Yeah. You have a pop moment. Tupac have a verse. Hey, Tupac have a verse about talking some conscious shit. He's like, fuck the niggas in the whole world. You feel me? Ride on them enemies. You have a moment, so you got to make sure that everything <laughs> comes back together. And, yeah. Um, Lil Mac, he tell me all the time, like, you great at that. Rapping thing, bringing things back together. So, you know, that was just the goal with Driven Two, just to make sure that I can give you something you can sit very with, cohesive. and they can like. I appreciate that. That's a word cohesive. that is used in my household all the Good. time. Let <laughs> let people know where they can find Driven Two. Um, everywhere but title. Okay. Everywhere we but title. It ain't no shot at you, uh, big homie hove either. Like, yeah, it's the rock. We have no, found no a way shout. to get to you. It yeah. will get the. the but look, I'll tell you this: there. I have a surprise coming for title it's coming through united masters i have a lot of things coming i seen through title i, I seen united safe masters. to say safe to say is definitely going to be available you know as well. we talked about mixtapes is now albums yeah, and mixtape. albums oh, yeah, see, hey look me? i mean if we, i see what if you own yeah well as everybody can see you see wiz just did it um i was speaking we ain't got that much time but i was speaking to my people, when we was talking about somebody else had did it previously, it was Travis Scott with Mama Sita. Mm-hmm. People have been doing this, putting those records up there. I wasn't able to really get into it, but that means something, and that's huge with what's going on right now with streaming yeah. and the way that it works. And all I can say is it's really 09 again. It's 2009 mm-hmm. again. If you know what that meant at that time, then you know what this means right now because the shift is like it's real. 